Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This is my Absolutely. wife, Sharon. That's right. Been May around for a while. 16 <laughs> this year, 55 years. I know, and you are so proud of that. I, I know, know you are. Well, I, know. I am too, actually. Hey. I am too. The girls at college said don't date him. He is not the kind of guy you want to date. <laughs> so they probably figured it would last a couple of years. Oh, you're taking, you're telling all our secrets. I know. Aren't I've you? got one of my favorite, most famous, yeah. actually, friends. Uh, th this guy, and this is what I notice in people because I have been around a few celebs. He doesn't know who he is. <laughs> I mean, he has traveled with the most famous people, the most famous athletes, and has done the most phenomenal jobs in the world. Yeah. And he has remained the most humble guy. He is. He's sweet. I mean, he is unbelievable. Just, I don't know how he figured that demeanor Can we out. say his name so everybody Should knows? Should we tell him? Yes, Pat Williams Pat is with Williams, us. Pat Williams, this I guy mean, right he's, here. He's, he's been with us. Every time he's written a book, we've had him he's, on because every one of his books He just are told me he has written 88 books. Yeah. He has, a, he has a schedule that would kill a guy about 20 years old with mm -hmm. lots of energy. I mean, it's unbelievable. Everybody knows who this guy is, so I don't know if I have to read all well, this. Well, just a little he's bit. He's the senior vice president of the NBA's Orlando Magic. That's his uh, claim to fame. But he's got so many Keep other reading. things Keep going reading, for Keep reading, honey. We can go right over here. He's one of America's most top motivational speakers and leadership My authors. Hi. My buddy. They've also had uh, 19 children, which is uh, something in itself. <laughs> uh, received the John W. Bunn Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, I mean, 85 but, books. But believe me, this is a <laughs> short version of his yes. accolades. Baseball Hall of, Fam uh, Hall of Famer, co-founder and senior vice president of the NBA's Orlando Magic, Pat, Pat Williams, exudes hope and optimism as one of America's top motivational speakers, as Sharon just alluded to. He has yep. addressed thousands of executives and organizations ranging from Fortune 500 companies and national associations to universities and nonprofits, including American Express, Coca-Cola, Disney, Nike, just to name a few. We could go on and on. The entire show would just cover a portion of what he's do done. That. What an honor to have you. Because he has a new book out. Yes. The Mission is Remission. And I have to tell you that I pray for you all the time. Because I jog a lot, and you are a marathoner. How many marathons were you I in? ended up doing 58 of them, Herman. <laughs> 50. I did 58 Wonderful. between ages 55 and 70. And then the uh, the cancer diagnosis came right after the 58th, and uh, that that's put a quite you know it's that's it's kind of shut it down for now. I love the book because you go in detail. My world changed on January 7, 2011. Two days later, he ran a marathon. Now. <laughs> you know your world changed so uh, January. It's kind of indicative of your personality. You get some unusual news, and your mind says, I go forward. Yeah, I, uh, I had a thorough physical on that Friday uh, in early January uh, of 11, and uh, the, the doctor said, uh, you know, that I was doing fine, except there were some signs in my blood work that didn't look right. And she said, you know, I want you to go see Dr. Robert Reynolds. I did not know who he was. Didn't realize at that time that he was an oncologist. Ooh. Nevertheless, that Sunday I ran the Disney Marathon, but uh, the three days later I woke up with the most excruciating back pain uh, imaginable. And I learned later, uh, Herman, that's a pretty good indication of multiple myeloma. Multiple uh, myeloma. It is one of the blood cancers. It's actually cancer of the blood in the bone marrow. 
and uh, I had never heard of it. <clears throat> Dr. Reynolds explained to me what it was, and uh, boy, uh, believe me, uh, I had a lot of questions, like, mm -hmm. what's the life expectancy? He and? said, he said two to three years. I said, well, what are we going to do now? He said, well, we're going to start treating you. Now, now, the way he is saying this, I will guarantee you that was his demeanor. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it was. It's, it's, like, it's like, okay, we're going to take this championship. What do we have to do to pull it off? I mean, it's <laughs> like you have that mindset. <laughs> well, that was, that was, that's how I was thinking that day, Herman, because I wanted to get started. You know, I didn't want to waste any time. Uh, you know, Dr. Reynolds said... Uh, you'd much rather have multiple myeloma in 2011 than 1990. He said that's the kind of progress we've made. And he said our job, <coughs> excuse me, he said our job is to keep you alive long enough for all this new medication and these new drugs uh, to get approved and get in the pipeline. Wow. And, that, and that's happened. Yeah. You know, I've, I've oh, been, you, oh, I'm on a lot of new stuff. That was four years ago you got yes, that diagnosis. That's right. Four years ago. January 13th, Dr. Wilson sat me down and said, this is the doctor's words, why do bad things happen to all the good people? Yeah, that was, Dr. Wilson was our family doctor for years, and uh, he was kind of the intermediary there, and... Uh, he didn't want to, you know, really diagnose it. He knew, he really knew what was going on, but he wanted the oncologist to deal with me. What a statement. Yeah, you know, you know, that was, I, I remember that vividly. Because he knew that I was, I, I, I had a major battle ahead. Yeah, and, but and, and, he, he, he thought it best that the, let the cancer doctors just, you know, explain it all. It is amazing because, I mean, I know you and have known you for years. And what a quality. What a quality guy he is. And when I read that statement from the doctor, as I was reading it, I thought I would say the same thing. How could that happen? And you say in the book, you, you have to get a copy because it goes in detail. It is, it is a phenomenal story. By the way, I have to tell you this since I have it in front of me. I reread his books. If you ever, his books are absolutely collectible. And this was in the library, and for some odd reason, in my library, and I, I just picked it up and started reading it, Secrets from, a, from the Mountain. And this was written a number of years ago, and I started, in fact, there's our picture, look at that. Oh, my. Look at that. <laughs> and, and I started reading it, and I thought, I'm going to tell Pat to find his copy of this book and reread it. This talks about what you're going through. I mean, the encouragement and the analogies and the examples, mm -hmm. as I'm reading it, I'm going, oh my goodness, this is amazing. How about that? You, 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 you got, I guarantee you, pick your copy up and start reading it. You go, this is unbelievable. And this was when you... you Cl climb Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, and, what, and, and, and he talks about what happened in that, in that climb, because we won't go through that, because this was a book that I interviewed him on many times ago, but uh, many days ago, many years ago. I'll get it right. Uh, you said this, I began mentally planning my own funeral. funeral uh, because what he has, they say, isn't curable. You know, it's treatable, but not curable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the good news is, uh, the last reports I, ha I have uh, gotten into remission, which is the goal of every anybody who is dealing with cancer. So they have, they've told me I'm, I'm in remission and uh, wow. they don't see any signs of multiple myeloma in my body. So that, uh, I, I said to the doctors, I said, that's good news, right? I mean, that's real yeah. good news. He said, yeah, yeah, that's about as good news as we can give you, so. In fact, in, in the book, and I, and I get your copy, please do that. It's a collectible, please know that. Uh, Dr. Reynolds uh, said that there are six factors of hope, hmm. okay? And here's the six, just read them for me. Well, the first one is a positive outlook. Number two, keeping fit. Number three, a durable faith. Number four, a loving family. Number five, caring friends. And number six, a supportive community. Wow. Uh, Dr. Reynolds, who, who uh, you know, I had not known him, but he was a basketball fan, a magic season ticket holder, and had followed my career. 
but but in that first day, Herman, he said, you're going to do well with this. Uh, that was what he said to me. He said, you're going to do well with this. Now, how did that uh, uh, feel? Uh, well, it felt very good. And then I said, uh, why, do you, why do you say that, Doc? Why do you say that? And he rattled off these six reasons uh, why I was going to do well. So uh, at, the, at that point, uh, I felt that I've got my cancer talk nailed down. Isn't that neat? Yeah, I've I got mean, a cancer talk now. And, and the no, number and, one. And it ended up being a book. It, and, it's, and it's phenomenal. Yeah, the number one, a positive outlook, perpetual optimism, that's who you are, uh, was going to help me battle with cancer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so many people say, you know, oh, that's, you're just pie in the sky, optimistic. But that actually is a healing part of our body. Well, they've, the doctors have told me that repeatedly, that they've seen that over the years. If you have an optimistic, positive, uh, hopeful approach to life, you're going to do much better uh, with, with a battle. Which you have cancer. had all your life. I have, I have. And I've written about it and I speak about it. So uh, this just is another step, <laughs> probably the biggest step of my life. Uh, but that's the way to do it. And I got a nice note in the middle of all this, uh, Herman, from Arnold Palmer, you yes. know, the great yeah. golfer, who's, who's had a b yeah. battle with cancer and he lost his first wife to cancer and yeah. his yeah. daughter's de dealing with it. Anyway, uh, he, I got a nice little note and, and Arnold said, here's what I've learned. And by the way, he, he has the foreword. He in did the book. foreword yeah. in the book. He said, Here, two things I learned. He said, uh, do everything your doctors tell you. Yeah. And number two, uh, stay stay positive yeah, and yeah. optimistic and mm -hmm. hopeful. You know, he said uh, that that's that's important. When that's when, right. when you wake up daily, what comes into your mind? Well, Lord, we got another day here, and uh, the first thing on my mind is um, let's make this day a masterpiece. Now, I learned that from John Wooden, the UCLA coach. Um, you know, his dad taught him that way, way, way back. Make each day your masterpiece. So that's, that's the thought on my mind. I, I've got to try and make this day a masterpiece day. Uh, that, that's my first thought wow. in the morning. Number two, keeping fit. That, that was the other one. And it says, you also have 19 reasons to stay fit. <laughs> and those 19 reasons are your family. Yeah. How, how many adopted? 14. 14 wow. adopted kids. It's amazing. So they, they have rallied. Uh, they've been wonderful. You know, they've been so supportive and rallied around me. And well, uh, yeah, you, you, are <laughs> you are extremely easy to like. <laughs> you know, there's some people you kind of work on it. And then somebody will say, you like that guy? And, and you'll say, well, yeah, you, if you get to know him, you really, well, Pat's just immediate like. Uh, Are you, they all off on their own, by the way? Uh, the yeah, children? the youngest of our kids is 28. The wow. oldest is 42. So they're all adults. Yes, yes. 14 grandkids. Uh, oh, my goodness. And we're enjoying them. That'll keep you young. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, now, did, did uh, your, the staff of the Orlando Magic and all of the owners and the, the, the individuals behind that phenomenal team, how did they stand with you? <coughs> They've been so supportive. And I, I would just tell you a quick story about Rich DeVos, who is the owner of our team, the co-founder of the Amway organization. Uh, when this news hit or when it was going on, I, I went to see him one night before a game. Uh, he was eating dinner and you know I just said I needed to talk to him and, and broke the news to he and his wife and uh, he, he just sat us down he said uh, we need to pray wow. so there was Rich DeVos one of America's wealthiest men a billionaire a billionaire and uh, we there he was just praying his heart out and every time I've seen him I saw him a couple of weeks ago and he said to me uh, he said I pray for you almost every day Praise the Lord. He said, I pray for you almost every day. And that, 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 that's, oh, that's powerful. You have a lot of people praying for you, don't you? I do. Yeah, you I don't do. even know about yeah. probably a lot yeah. of them. You yeah. do. You do. That's great. Appreciate that. Stem cell transplant or death. Well, that was a key step, Herman. You, <clears throat> I, they, the medication and the chemo did not get me into remission. So the next step is a stem cell transplant. 
So they uh, perched me up in that chair, <clears throat> hooked me up to all sorts of equipment, and for two days, the better part of two days, I'm watching five million of my stem cells uh, going into a plastic bag, and, uh, and, then, and then they froze them. And then the next week I had a huge, massive dose of chemo, the last one. And then uh, about eight o'clock in the morning, a nurse came in with 13 vials or little, what do you call them, Squee squeeze it's or whatever. And I spent all day having those 13 stem cells of mine. So uh, it was like incision? Yeah, you know, didn't hurt. Okay. You know, you, I just lay there and uh, all day long until five o'clock. What, what, I'm always hospital. interested in this. <laughs> and then they told me to get up and get out of bed. Wow. After they, I mean, were you strong enough to get up out of bed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wow. interesting, and I told this story in the book that the cutoff age for stem cells in the, at, over there is 65. And I was 70 at this point. Wow. But they said, we're gonna let you go ahead and do it because your fitness level's good enough. They knew how you had taken care of your yeah, body. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and so uh, I, I thought <coughs> all of that exercising and all of that I was doing all those years really was preparing me for a stem cell transplant at age 70. Unbelievable. When the cutoff age was 65. You know, I, 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 still, I, I still am puzzled. Did you smoke? No. You weren't a drinker? No. You didn't carouse? I mean, like staying out to two or three in the morning and getting two hours sleep and going to work. <laughs> I, you took care of yourself athletically, yeah. and you were a top athlete before you became the, the top guy. It puzzles me that people that do that still have things happen to them. Yeah, isn't that something, Herman? What, I, what is that? Well, I asked Dr. Reynolds right off the bat, because uh, I was stunned. You know, I'm Mr. Fitness, you know. Yes. God's guy, right? Yes. And, I, and so my reaction was, um, uh, what caused this? And he said, we don't know. He said, age may have something to do with it. And, uh, and then when I was alone, Herman, I went through that, Lord, what are you doing? Yes. Why? Why? Yeah. Why me? Yeah. I mean, what, 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 this isn't right. I had I had that for a few days. Absolutely. And then uh, and then Randall James at First Baptist in Orlando said to me, "Jesus could have stopped this, Pat, but he decided to let it go ahead." And as I look back, Herman, I'm glad he, I'm glad uh, it happened because I've been called here in my mid-70s to, uh, to a whole ministry of the, the, the cancer ministry, mm -hmm. which is far more important than anything I've ever done before. You know, fundraising, encouraging people, speaking, um, uplifting. There's doors open that you oh. didn't have before. Herman, it's just it, it never ending. And, I, and who would have thought, right? I mean, <laughs> who would have thought? Yeah, I mean, how, what, 15 years ago we were doing interviews together and. But then, who, but it, who would have, I'm fast forward and going, someday, yeah. Pat, you're going to be sitting in front of me and you're going to have a whole new ministry to people that have been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. Wow. And God has opened that door and given me a ministry to the cancer world, which is a never ending world, Herman. It's just massive. Yeah. I didn't realize it's massive. And one out of two men in our country will end up dealing with cancer at some point in their life, one out of three women. Now think of that statistic. I know. So if there are a hundred men here, you know, if half wow. fifty of them are going to end up with a cancer issue, somewhere, sometime. Wow. Now that you, is you you had to get amazing. mail from every part of the world. I have heard from everywhere, Herman, and still do. <laughs> I still do, and I do my best to respond. And and you have touched so many lives as a coach, as a player. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in college with your college mates. I mean, and all of these have a story to tell about Pat. Well, I've, I've noticed that. I've heard from many, many, many people wow. who have reached out to me and 
shared some memories, and you know that that's been very encouraging. But we are uh, taking this cancer battle head on, and um, we got to get got to get this thing resolved. Number three, a durable faith. Oh, wow. Herman, you know what? Once I got my head on straight, um, you know, I, I I was faced with one of two decisions: just shake my fist in God's face, you know, and just turn my back on him or kind of, kind of the job yeah you know, I could have yeah. done that yeah. that was one option yeah. the other option was to just do a flying leap into his lap and, 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 and <laughs> I like that <laughs> and, and, and just to get my arms around his neck so tight and never and, and not let go wow. and that's what I did I, I did number two and uh, that was the right choice so there I am you know just clinging and uh, so he's uh, kept me alive, <clears throat> kept me in feeling good, you know, able to function with a, with a full life, and I'm so grateful for that. And you know, he's opened up these cancer doors, so I'm in the cancer world, Herman, you know, teaching and learning about it and writing and speaking and so you said there's new drugs coming out oh all yeah the time. that's that's the beautiful thing with multiple myeloma and other forms of cancer uh -huh. Sharon uh, they are uh, there's some wonderful researchers wonderful scientists the only thing holding them back really is lack of finance really so the so I tell people constantly whenever you have a chance to make a contribution to any form of cancer research. research. Please do it. Boy, great Please advice. Do it. Great do advice. It. Please do it. Uh, you have to get your own copy, but he has great words by John Piper and Henry Blackaby, <laughs> and they've helped you so much. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're going to have to get your copy because they are fabulous words. And the number four is a loving family. Mm. Well, they came, we had to tell them that was hard, you know, what had happened to me. And there were various reactions. From uh, weeping to go get them, Dad. You know, there yeah, yeah. was a wide range, but uh, they they have been so good. I mean, they have uh, supported me. The the children. They've they they've never had any pity parties. Uh, they've never um, been overwhelmed with emotion. You know, they've been strong and stable and uplifting to me. And uh, I guess that was the reason. <laughs> We adopted them <laughs> <laughs> for this very hour. Yeah, yeah this very yeah. How about your wife? Uh, she's been great. How did she handle it? Yeah, she just, and still does handle it beautifully. Wow. Never, never. It's hard on wives too. Oh yeah, but I've never seen tears. I've never seen, you know, I've never seen uh, uh, feel sorry for yeah. me. You know, yeah. she's wow. She's a rock, and she's and the one thing that they, these doctors told me, Sharon, they said, go live your life. That's we'll tuck good. the medical stuff around your life. But don't uh, <clears throat> don't sit on the sideline. And you sh yeah, and you wouldn't know how to do that anyway. You no, know, you know, that was. Uh, and Ruth's the same way. I yeah. mean, she's mm -hmm. out doing her work with Franklin yeah. Covey and yeah. traveling and teaching yeah. and doing what she does. And Number five is a caring friends. Number six is a supportive community, which certainly you have that. Yeah, I've been there twenty in Orlando twenty eight years, Herman, and I've been involved in many many activities and wow. works into Central Florida and. And uh, Dr. Reynolds said, you're gonna, you're gonna feel a return now on yeah. all that you've invested yeah. over these years. Yeah. He said, you're gonna feel that return. Yeah. And he was right on that. This is what you've done. You've given forward. Now you're reaping the benefit. Play it you know, forward. Yeah. yeah. You know, and people have uh, reached out wow. you know, the, on the wow. other end here, you know. Mm -hmm. His epilogue, the privilege of cancer. When I, I mean, you, you need to read that. It's, it's amazing to me how this has become not a curse, but now you're looking at the value of what has happened to me. Yeah. What growth? Yeah, I've, I've grown a lot, Herman, in the last three and a half years. I, <clears throat> I couldn't have said that to you on day one when all this hit. Absolutely. <clears throat> but as I've really reflected on it and had a chance to you know, focus, uh, I, I've, th this is a gift that God gave me. I, I saw the press conference that you had did you when you first announced it yeah and I mean I, I'm like stunned I, I've, I've got to show you something I've had this on my wall probably for five years and every time I look at it I think of Pat Williams about that. and it says ah. every day holds the possibility 
of a miracle. Right there. There you go. It's a good, good shot. Yeah, I like that, Herbie. And, and I've signed it on the back. And the verse, Psalms 50, verse 2. O oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you have healed me. Wow. 50, Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verse 2, New King James. And I tell you, hmm. you, know, you know, I'm looking at that all the time, and I'm glad I never thought that I would be given, but, but every time I look at that, and today I walk in, and my eyes focused upon this like never before, and I, and I just went over to my wall, I took it off my wall, and I go, that's Pat's. Isn't that beautiful? That's neat, honey. That's neat. <laughs> so the, the guy that I cherish is a friend, <laughs> and you're it. What a, what a blessing you have been in my life. Well, thanks, Herman. And, uh, and still are. <laughs> and, and now I hear... Uh, you were just on, was it, was it NBC? Uh, I was on the CBS, CBS morning show okay. yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. And, and, and uh, what was it, uh, King, was it? Gail yeah, King. Gail King, King yeah. Oprah's good friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, what a sweetheart. Treated you like a, oh, like a. What a sweetheart. A dad. Yeah, I was so impressed. You know, she came in to check us before the interview and. <coughs> Then came back afterwards, after it was over, to make sure that it had gone wow. Wow. to our liking. Yeah. And That's wonderful. Sweet lady. Yeah. I was very impressed. Pray with somebody. we got about less than a minute left. Well, I think every family in America has been touched by cancer mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. And so uh, your viewers today, you know, are dealing with it in some fashion. Somebody so, needs that prayer. Well, let's just pray. Lord, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to talk yeah. openly with the viewers here th today. And uh, to any people that are dealing with cancer and any families that are wrestling with cancer issues, I just pray that uh, you will give them uh, courage. Yes. You'll give them good medical attention. Amen. Uh, you'll, you'll give them a good attitude. Yes. Uh, you'll give them uh, a strong faith, Lord, you know, just to cling tightly to you. Amen. And uh, because you're the great healer, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed and healing be thy name. That's a good way to pray the yes. Lord's Prayer. Yes. And uh, so we pray for healing across America uh, with cancer battles. Yes. And uh, may this book be an encouragement yes. to people as well. Amen. Uh, we pray for uh, Herman and Sharon's ministry. Uh, they may continue to reach out and make a difference in the lives of countless thousands. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. God bless you. Bye-bye. Good job. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.